David, let me just, I, I wasn't going to ask you this focused a question so early, but let me uh, put you on the spot early. You're at the grassroots. You're a student at Hunter College. Yes. Referring to the article you read in the New York Times last Sunday, I also read that article. I think that part of the problem uh, with racism in this country is that we try to define it with statistics. Racism is a humanistic problem. It cannot be uh, analyzed mathematically. And to prove this point, if we refer to Article 1, Section 2 of the United States Constitution during the uh, apportionment of the taxes as well as the representation uh, within the government, we find that whites were counted as one, Indians were excluded, African Americans were counted as three-fifths a, a number uh, of human beings, three-fifths of a human being. So I think that when we break it down like that and we find that this type of mentality was embedded in the document which founded this country. We find that the problem is in the American consciousness. And the same problems that existed in 1787 concerning racism exist today in 1987. I think the uh, fact that we're all sitting on this panel proves that point. So I think we can look at people as numbers. Uh, concerning this uh, help from the government and to try to bring all the races together, I think that once we understand that racism is something that has been here this long, it is not something that can be eliminated or taken away. Uh, it is something that has to be dealt with, okay? It is something that is not going to leave. It does not leave a competitive society where competition is the basis of how people interact. So I feel that it is not cooperation or confrontation that is the question. It is education. To educate each group individually, to protect themselves, from the social, political, and economic attacks which prevail in a competitive society. We do not want to integrate out of power, we want to integrate into power. Don't, don't you, as the younger generation, keep us in that box. We're trying to get out of it. Well, see, the, the problem with what you're saying is that when you divide blacks and whites, you're creating the problem yourself because you're calling me a minority. When you take African Americans, compare them to Italian Americans, Jewish Americans, you find out that the African Americans constitute a large number of this population. But when you compare black and white, you're grouping all white ethnic groups together, and of course we're going to look like a minority. There's nothing minor about our population. Oh, I agree with you 100%. That's why I feel education of the group to protect itself is the first step. There's nothing in this country which frightens a white racist more in this country than education, an African American who is thinking. And if you walk up to a white racist with a Bible, he will knock you on your head and send you on your way. If you approach him with a rifle, he will shoot you down first or exile you as what happened with the Black Panthers in the early 1970s. So that's why I'm saying education is the way. If it is hard for you to believe that the most dangerous thing in this country is an African American who is thinking, just visit the grave sites of Martin Luther King and Malcolm X, two great social thinkers, and you will understand what I'm talking about. David, I was just like that. In, the, in New York, there are over 200 ethnic groups, and you're absolutely right. Education is the key to success. It's the key to bringing black people together, to give black people uh, economic stability, empowerment, and everything else. I think David is right. Until the black community asserts its own power, it's not going to have any power in New York City or any other city.